Well, viewers, welcome back to our very occasional series, Beige Leather Sofa Reviews, where we look at uh, automotive-related technology products and apologise to Dr. Stuart Ashton for ripping off his channel. Today we have the Ediag YA201 OBD Enhanced Code Scanner. I was actually sent this uh, by the company. Um, unsurprisingly, it is made in China. This thing goes for around uh, £30 or so on Amazon. And uh, as always with Beige Leather Sofa reviews, it's not a very good review. I have actually changed my camera setup since the last one we did. Um, the autofocus seems to be working. But we're going to uh, open the box, as I'm doing now. And uh, we'll have a look at the device itself. And we're going to test it on a couple of cars because that's what you want to see these sort of thing for. Now, if we just take this out, first of all, we've got this very, very strange, come on, autofocus. There we go. Very, very strange cable. And that's a mini USB port. I haven't seen a mini USB port for a long time. It used to be, uh, whoops, it fell on the floor. I told you this wasn't very good, viewers, and I think I was right. So, just let's see what else we've got in here. There's the code reader itself. I'll just take off this plastic sleeve. And uh, there's the OBD2 port on here, which will go into, as the box says, the majority of cars after 1996, although I know loads and loads of cars that aren't OBD2 compatible until sometimes the mid 2000s, uh, Mazda 66 would be one of them. It's quite light this thing, I mean, you can see here it is very very light. Um, it's very simple, it's only got four buttons, okay back up and down. And it does uh, claim to do OBD2, come on autofocus, OBD2, EOBD and CAN, CAN bus. And uh, there we go, there's the specifications on the back of there. So uh, the box on the back says it's uh, Full 10 modes of OBD2 test, customizing graph live date. Not data, date. I wonder if I have a live date with a graph coming up. Graph batter T voltage test. Doing well already, aren't we, viewers? Multi language available, built in DTC took up and 2.4 inch TFT color screen. The last time I saw a 2.8 inch, 2.4 inch TFT color screen, I think it was in. About 2003 on an old Mitsubishi Trium Eclipse phone that I used to have. Anybody else remember Mitsubishi Trium phones? Probably not. Okay, the quick start guide is here. Um, there is no other manual in the box. At least this isn't printed on a single sheet of toilet paper, uh, like some of the old pop station uh, instruction manuals were back in the day of Dr. Russian's channel. Gosh, I can't believe you've been on YouTube for 17 years. Will I be on YouTube for 17 years? Probably not at this rate. Okay, so general scan tool information, tool menu, DT lookup, battery, uh, user interface. Yeah, enter, back, up, down, OBD connector, um, LCD display, up, enter, right, that's okay. Specifications are on there if you're interested in their story. Temperature of minus 20 to 70 degrees centigrade. Oh my god. Uh, operating temperature minus 10 to 40 degrees. So if you're in a desert or you're in a Siberian winter, maybe not the best thing to use. And that weight is really, really low. It's under it's under uh, 200 grams, and gross weight is only 240 grams. Right, we use a scan tool. Okay, so we might be doing this earlier on, later on. Uh, look at the connector. Yeah, I know where mine is, and one of the cars we're testing, the one I'm not sure. Uh, connect the tool. Right, well, I'll have a look at this when we're actually... Actually using that and then oh my gosh look at all these abbreviations of live data so it's got an appendix of the live data and it goes on for pages uh so if there's anything else on here that's actually going to be useful right uh right okay dtc look at battery settings languages unit data logging self-test keyboard test system information and there's the wonderful font that so many of these devices seem to have when they come in from the PRC. Right, viewers, I think the only thing to do now is to maybe charge this up a bit um, using the cable that's fallen on the floor. That's a level of professionalism we have on Beige Leather Sofa Reviews. There we go. Just found it then. And uh, 
We'll see if this actually works. If it doesn't, viewers, I'm sure you'll know about it soon. So here we are down at the secret workshop of uh, Mr. Partridge, who owns this lovely maxi that you might have seen on the channel. However, we're not here to look at the maxi or other stuff that's uh, in the back of there. We are here to uh, use the code reader on uh, my Rover 45 V6. So uh, the port for this car is actually down here. It's actually down back of there. And uh, we shall see what happens. As you can see on this old Rover 45, the uh, OBD2 port is down there. There's not even a cover on it, actually. You just plug it in there. Typical sort of car you might use this on actually because um, it's very useful for sort of the older, sort of early OBD2 cars like this one. So we can look at all sorts of things. We can look at the uh, battery on here. And it's just showing that it's, well, it's probably discharging because I've got the ignition on. We were in position number two actually on the ignition here. And uh, we can go for diagnosis. Now, there aren't really any codes touched in here because there's nothing wrong with this car. I mean, we've got the lights on on the dash, but that's just because we've got the ignition in position two. So we can look at this. It's just set some protocols. It's very light, this. It only weighs about 200 grams. It's very, very light. And actually, it's better than some of the things you can get, but it's a sort of six pounds that talk to a smartphone, um, which can be a bit more of a sort of hassle. This is a lot more money than that, but. It seems to do everything that uh, you'd expect something like this to do. Um, it's a shame I just don't have any don't have any fault codes to sort of actually show you um, what's going on with this. It's communication error. Right. Okay. Have a take a pause here. I think we're going to have to turn this off and on again. Just notice one thing. It says verify if the vehicle is OBD2 complain. Well, it's certainly complaining at the moment. Um, I'll have to. OBD2 cable connected tight. I'll have to see if it's actually um, connected up. It was working a second ago. Uh, let's uh, just see if it's actually done. I'm not a mechanic or anything, and I don't really know much about these things, so that's why we've got uh, someone who actually knows what he's talking about, which is Mr. Partridge, who regularly uses these card readers on cars to actually supervise what I'm doing, so I don't want to mess anything up. Right, let's uh, see if this is connected properly again, and uh, so what else we can do with this. So on here we've got all sorts of brands we can have. I mean Acura is not that useful in this country but Ooh, come on autofocus. Dayu Daihatsu. Wow. Ferrari. GM that'll be interesting is what GM brand we've actually got. Stop. Come on autofocus. Come on. Oh, right. Okay that's better. I don't have to move it too much because there's autofocus. Mercury, Plymouth, Porsche, Rover, yes! That's what, we, that's what we like to see. MG's not actually on here, so I'm assuming that this is only for sort of uh, pre-2005 um, MG's, which obviously would come under Rover. Let's see what happens here. There we go, all the codes on there. So yeah, here's the main menu here. Uh, there's battery as well. Socket, there we go. And settings, I think this is mainly because of things like uh, the languages and the data logging. And there's a self-test function on here as well. Good test for display and the keyboard. Well, that seems to be working. We don't need to worry too much about that, do we? And uh, for various languages. What kind of languages can we have this in? All oh, right, English is probably the best, isn't it? Only nine languages. I presume that's uh, Cantonese or something on there. Yeah, the keyboard's still sort of a bit light and not the nicest feeling thing, but it doesn't matter if something like this it costs £30, does it really? Okay, a bit concerned about this diagnosis thing not actually working anymore. Maybe I've got to uh, actually physically 
get out of the car and lock it and then come back or something like that, I don't know. Right, okay, excellent. Okay, hopefully this autofocus is going to work properly now. We're actually connected, it must have a timer or something out. But, yeah, it works. There we go, read codes, erase codes, live data, freeze frame, vehicle information. Um, turning the engine on, I'm going to have your hands to do this. Um, <laughs> see if we can just read some codes though, whilst we're here. Don't want to erase the codes actually, because I'm just going to need to show. It's stored codes. No, this car was actually um, worked on fairly recently, back in uh, sort of uh, December, January, and um, the codes that were in there for what actually happened to it when had the cramp position sensor fail, they actually were removed. So there's nothing in there to sort of see, really. Um, yeah, okay, we've done that before. Never said this is going to be a, in any way professional thing, viewers. Um, OT sensor test. Right, I'll, if I pause a second here, I actually turn the engine on. Let's see if, if um, that vehicle information works. Okay, you can hear the KV6 engine working there. Um, I have the engine on. What's going on? Oh dear, that's not the best, is it? Live data, have we got anything here? All data stream. Right. Oh, okay, two seconds. Oh, here we go. Excellent, look at all this. That's better, isn't it? All this sort of... This load on the engine is this much, and there's different things you can do as an RPM, temperature, all kinds of things in here. That's pretty useful if you need to have a look at it. Obviously, I'm not entirely sure what a lot of these things actually mean, but uh, there it is. See if the vehicle information is going to work. No, it doesn't work. OT sensor tests. Oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> She's not supported. Right, yeah, there's all kinds of things you can do to do on here. Um, not going to sort of fiddle around anymore because I think you've probably seen enough of what this thing can do in this particular car. I think what we'll do is we'll um, get the Volvo out with the, the, the engine that I can't talk about uh, that belongs to Mr Partridge and we'll um, take a look and see if there's anything else on there. The port on this Volvo, by the way, is just, just down there. It's just a different place from the Rover. Okay, viewers, there's a reason why this car hasn't appeared on the channel so far. It's because it has a type of engine which you can't discuss, thanks to the Mayor of London and all his friends around the country. But it is a very nice car, because underneath this, it has a beige leather interior. <laughs> I do like a nice beige leather interior, but yes, we will not be reviewing this car viewers um, because we can't But we can review this device working with it So key is in the ignition stop stop button is engaged and we can look at some diagnostics of this um, It was just working so there we go There we are compression ignition. Yes, it is a compression ignition engine um, Yeah, we can go through this is actually a five-cylinder engine. Uh, mine is a six. There we go, we're in the diagnostic. We, there aren't, again, there aren't any actual codes in here um, to read. But the interesting thing is with this particular car, because it's a 2011 rather than a 2003, it's actually got permanent codes in it, so it is a bit different. But, yeah, I mean, this does... As you can see, an awful lot of things, if you want it to. Um, component test, is that the only thing on here? It, you have to sort of play with this a bit and um, see exactly what um, the individual car supports, because they do support different things. So we've got what well, Rover was on here. I'm only flicking these buttons forever, aren't I? It's not a very nice sound or very nice thing to do this particularly, but uh, you know it's good to know that these are are actually in here. We go right the way down. Volvo, here we are. 
and you can enter the trouble code numbers in there. Just run this one more time. It's much quicker to connect to the car than it is the Rover. It must be just because the car's a bit more sophisticated. But yeah, I, I think that's really it. I don't think there's a lot more to say uh, with this. We'll uh, go back into the Rover now and um, I think we'll just draw some conclusions about this device. Lloyd Logan Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. So as you can see here, you just have to follow this sort of menu tree and you get to the right place to read the codes. Sometimes you've got to make sure the car is on to a certain level of ignition, which for this one's particularly relevant because you can't actually read certain things unless you're in position two or you've actually started the engine. So there we go. There is all the dynamics functions, live data, which we've already seen. And uh, this is what the abbreviations of these things mean. You can look at some of the potential codes that you would have with one of these. Oxygen sensor, 99. Short-term fuel trim, ignition timing, better throttle position. It's not really designed for somebody like me because I don't particularly have enough knowledge of car electronics and mechanics to be able to use this on a daily basis. It would be more useful if I were, for example, to want to avoid paying the 50 to 70 pound charge that somebody at a garage would, char would, would uh, um, actually um, want to have for plugging in something like this or probably a more sophisticated one in a garage whereas I can I can read some of the codes myself and I can look them up on the internet and uh, and see what they mean it's probably quite useful if you break down you don't have to call out the breakdown service or if you want to actually speak to the service then you've got um, the manual here um, some of the abbreviations and some of this one here, it looks like it works for quite a number of cars. We tested a car from 2003, 2011. The typical kind of years that you might want to do a bit of home mechanics on on a, on a car that's well out of sight of its warranty. And in the case of this Rover, there's no manufacturer backup whatsoever. Uh, so that's interesting. Anyway, I think that's it. Um, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like us really leave a comment below. And um, thank you to... The company Adiag for sending me this, which is why this is actually a um, sponsored review because I, I've got this item for free. I did tell them before I actually uh, started filming that I wasn't going to do anything other than um, but be honest about it. And of course, I've got to make sure that I do the graph battery voltage test. Thank you so much indeed once again.